Hello everyone. My name is Karthik Vijay Raghun and I'm a Darkman DB Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. In the last video, I showed you how to create a Darkman DB cluster using the AWS Management Console. And in this video, I'll walk you through that cluster and show you how you can perform scale operations in Darkman DB. So let's jump right into it. So I'm here again at the AWS Management Console for Darkman DB. And as you can see, our demo cluster uh, that we initiated in the last video was completed and uh, all the three instances are in available status. So we have uh, three instances uh, of R5 large size and uh, they are all distributed across uh, the three uh, availability zones. So let's uh, look, at, look at this cluster and uh, you know, uh, understand what the various parts of the UI uh, communicate to us. All right, so let's start with the first tab, which is connectivity and security. Here you can access the connection strings. Uh, if you wanna connect uh, to doc document DB from a, a Mongo shell, you can copy this connection string. And if you wanna connect to document DB from your application, let's say you know, you're using Java, .NET, Python, or any other application, uh, and you're interacting with the database using Mongo driver, you can use this connection string over here to uh, interact with document DB. And I'll, I'll, I'll show that in one of the videos to you on how you can uh, you know, use this string and connect to the database and perform some CRUD operations. So, and also, you know, if you scroll down the list here, you'll see that there's a security group section. And this is the security group we chose uh, when we created the cluster. So you can, you know, go and look at the security group to see what it contains. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty straightforward security group with just one inbound rule, which allows access uh, over using TCP protocol over the port 27017 for specific uh, you know, application server. In this case, I'm using Cloud9 environment uh, as my application server, which is basically EC2 instance running on a browser. Uh, I'm just simplifying it here for you know, ease of understanding. But uh, what the security group does is allows this Cloud9 uh, environment to interact with document DB over this port uh, and uh, using TCP protocol. So that's, that's about the security group configuration and uh, you know if i go to the next tab over here you can see that i have three instances that, that we created right one one has the role of primary and i have two other replica instances so document db you can have one primary instance that accepts writes and you can scale your reads by adding up to uh, 15 replica instances so let's, while we are here, let's go ahead and perform a scale operation. So I'm gonna say create, and I'm gonna add, uh, you know, a demo four instance or the fourth instance to my cluster uh, of the same size. I can set a promotion tier. Uh, and when I do that, you know, that particular instance is gonna give a, be given a higher priority when it comes to failover. So if I say tier zero is the promotion tier for this instance, and if the primary instance fails, uh, this replica instance will be considered uh, for uh, you know being promoted to the new primary. And then I can add more instances here like this by clicking this add additional instance. And I'm gonna add another instance and say this has a tier one preference. Right now it doesn't matter because all the instances are of the same size or I'm using the same instance classes. But let's say you have a larger instance class or you have a specific instance class that you want to be you know, selected when a primary fails, you can do that through this promotion tier. So in this case, I'm gonna scale my three instance cluster uh, you know, with, with one primary and two replicas to a six instance cluster. So I'll have one primary and uh, five replicas. So let me add my last replica over here, um, which, which can be tier three, for example. Right? I, can, I can add more instances, but right now I'm just gonna go with uh, you know, three, three more instances. So I'm gonna go and say create. And that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to scaling. So you choose what type of instance you want, uh, you know, optionally select a promotion tier and you're, you're good to go. So this cluster, right, I mean, th these instances are, are right now in creating status. And again, it takes about eight to 10 minutes for these to become available. And when they are available, you know, they, they are ready to be used by your applications. So let, let us, 
you know, uh, let this, these instances uh, be created. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this, this walkthrough. We'll, we'll go and look at um, the other um, parts of the UI here. So let's go to the configuration uh, tab over here, right? So here you can see uh, the various options we selected uh, during the cluster creation time. So you can, if you want to modify a cluster, you can do so by clicking on this modify button. You can change security group, you can change the credentials, you can change the backup retention period or even the backup window. And you can also change the maintenance window or disable deletion protection. So what you cannot change is the encryption option. So once you encrypt a cluster, it is encrypted uh, forever. You cannot uh, you know, uh, disable that encryption uh, by modifying the cluster. Likewise, uh, the VPC that you chose while creating the cluster is, uh, can be selected only during cluster creation. You cannot modify uh, uh, in the screen and say, hey, now run this database cluster in a different VPC. You cannot do that. So when you create a cluster, you should know which VPC you want to, it to be created in and also you know, whether you want it to be encrypted or not. So uh, let's say you know I make some change here, right? So I can I can say oh, I want to change this backup retention to eleven o'clock or so on, right? So I can click on continue, and I have an option here. I can say hey, I want to apply this modification right away, or I want to do it like in the next maintenance window, right? So you know changes like these, like changing the backup retention window from a current value of uh, you know twenty two uh, or, or ten o'clock to 10, uh, 11 o'clock, I can, I can choose like apply immediately and say modify cluster, right? So that will basically change my, uh, you know, cluster, uh, the, 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 the window in which my uh, automated snapshot is gonna be taken is gonna be now 11 o'clock. So let's, let's continue looking at this UI now. Um, and then, you know, uh, after configuration tab, you have this monitoring tab, right? So you can uh, monitor different metrics at doc, at a instance and a cluster level. And DocumentDB provides more than 50 metrics today to monitor. So if you look at the categorization, right, there are like uh, metrics uh, that talks about resource utilizations, how much data you're, you're, you're storing in this cluster. Uh, what is the CPU utilization? How much free memory do you have? And so on. How much database connections are you using? What are the database cursors that are open? And so on and so forth. And then there are throughput metrics to talk about, you know, how many read IOPS and write IOPS are, uh, you know, consumed. What is the throughput in terms of network read and write, uh, you know, uh, writing the data? latency, read latency and write latency and uh, replica lag maximum between, this is basically the replica, uh, the lag between the primary instance and the replica instances. And then operations, right? You can see all the CRUD operations. Uh, what are the query operations, command operations, you know, if you're doing any deletes, performing any get mores uh, and inserts and updates and so on, you can see all that in the under the operations section. And then you also have the system uh, level metrics, which has like, you know, uh, key metrics like index buffer cache at ratio and buffer cache at ratio, which tells you how much percentage of reads is happening through the instances uh, buffer cache versus how much is being accessed through the distributed storage volume. Uh, so that's about the monitoring tab. Uh, and, and, you know, if you pay attention here, you can see that there are add to dashboard buttons. So you can use this to add, add these to your CloudWatch dashboard and monitor you know, this cluster uh, from CloudWatch. You can also monitor multiple clusters uh, using one dashboard in CloudWatch. And then, you know, moving to events and tags, um, you know, here you can see the various events um, and, uh, you know, any tag. So I created a tag called, uh, uh, you know, environment as dev uh, during the cluster creation time. So you can see that. Um, and then like, you know, going through this part of the UI, so you can see snapshots. So, you know, I have a couple of manual snapshots from before, uh, but you know, I don't, you don't see any automated snapshots because I just created the cluster. So come tomorrow, I should be able to see, see one automated snapshot, uh, which is generated at 11 o'clock uh, in the night UTC time. Uh, but if I want to create a manual snapshot right away, I can do that as well. So I can choose my cluster. In this case, I have only one cluster. So it will be the demo cluster. And I can say, you know, this is demo, manual snap 
and I create it, right? So that's it, the, the manual snapshot is in a creating status and in a few minutes, uh, it should be available uh, for you if you wanna restore. When you have a snapshot, you can always, you know, select that snapshot and perform operations like, you know, restore to another cluster, copy it to another region or share it with another account. Um, so you can, you can do all those actions with a snapshot. Subnet group. If you recall, we chose the subnet group during the cluster creation time. So what the subnet group contains is, you know, it has three subnets and each subnet is uh, present in one availability zone, right? Like 2A, 2B and 2C in this case. So this, uh, you know, again, this is our way to tell DB that when you create instances, distribute them across these availability zones, right? So that's, that's the purpose of subnet group. And cluster parameter group, uh, again, we chose this default uh, parameter group. You can always create a new parameter group if you want. Um, so what does this default parameter group contain? So it says audit log is disabled, profiler log is disabled, TLS is enabled. So any, any uh, you know, uh, data transfer over the wire for, between your application server and uh, document DB, in this case, is, is gonna be encrypted. And uh, the reason we disable audit log and profiler log by default is, you know, we want our customers to make informed decision because when you use them, there's going to be additional cost because, you know, there's a, there's going to be a cloud watch cost for those logs and so on. So you can always enable this, but keep in mind, you cannot modify a default uh, parameter group. So if you want to uh, enable audit log, profiler log, what you can do is you can go ahead and say create, give, give this a name called custom, and, uh, you know, this is going to be a 4.0 family and say my parameter group uh, and this this name is just like for for your own uh, identification and let's say create right so here once this is created then you can go and say hey enable this this value right so you can say edit and you can say enable and apply the change immediately uh, also keep in mind that you're just changing the parameter group here like i'm editing the um prof uh, you know enabling profiler log but this doesn't mean that the cluster is modified. You're just changing the parameter group. You need to assign this parameter group to your cluster by modifying the cluster for the, uh, for the change to take, take, take place, right? For this parameter group to be associated to your cluster. But again, once you have a parameter group, you can associate it to multiple clusters as you please. And then we have this event subscription uh, feature where you, know, you can create an event subscription and uh, you know you can subscribe to different events within within document db so let's call this as demo and uh, you know you can you can uh, choose an existing arn uh, if you already have a topic or you can say a new topic for this demo i'm just going to say you know this is my email topic and i'm going to give my email address um, so so what's going to happen is anytime an event is triggered i'll get notification to this email address Right, so now I'm going to choose my source type of the of the resource, um, you know, for, for which I'm going to consume the events from. So I'm going to say I want it to be consumed from this cluster. And if I have multiple clusters, I can say all cluster or I can select a specific cluster. In this example, since I have only one cluster, it doesn't make a big difference. But I'm going to just say select specific cluster and I'm going to select my demo cluster. And again, within this cluster, do I want to subscribe to all events or specific events? So let's say specific events and look at what are the various options. So you can, you know, subscribe to a change in configuration or you can subscribe to you know, creation or deletion events. Let's go ahead and subscribe to failover events. There are other events like maintenance, you know, no notification and other stuff, but I'm just gonna say failover. Um, and then like, you know, uh, you, can, you can subscribe more events here if you want to. But again, for simplicity, I'm just going to select one. So what's going to happen is if there is a, if the primary instance of this demo cluster fails, I'll get an email to this address uh, saying that, hey, there is a, there is a failover triggered. So let's go ahead and say create. And you can see that this, uh, uh, the, the, the subscription that we just created is active and then you can access it over here. And then moving down the UI here, like there's an events tab, which shows like, you know, what are the different events I created a custom, uh, you know, a parameter group and, you know, all the other events that I perform, not just for this demo cluster, but across all the, uh, for all the cl clusters uh, in this region, Oregon. 
and then what's new has like you know information about uh, you know what what uh, what is the latest releases what are the new features we are launching and then uh, tutorials has information about some hands on uh, you know materials and some videos to help you you know learn more about document db so with that let's go back to our cluster so i click this cluster button over here and you can see that the scale operation that we started is is completed and uh, you know there are six instances uh, in this cluster now so we scaled the three instance cluster uh, to six instance cluster and uh, let's see if what happened to our backup so our backup even though this is an empty cluster so there's not much to you know take a snapshot here but the the manual snapshot process also completed so that brings us to the end of this uh, video in the next video, I'll show you how you can perform CRUD operations in this cluster.